Hey, so for tips and tricks this week, um, I just want to chat to you a little bit about what I do, um, particularly when I'm cutting calories and I'm trying to make the most of my meals. So the key thing there, first and foremost, is to appreciate the fact that I said meals. Um, when your calories are cutting, it's so easy to, you know, get really hungry and eat all of your food in one go. Um, now I've heard other people training and trainers talk about in the past, you know, it doesn't matter um, the amount of calories you eat in a day, because it doesn't, um, as long as you hit your daily calorie target. Um, and it doesn't matter how frequently you eat those meals. However, by spreading your meals out throughout the day, you're going to suppress your appetite and you're going to be able to feel fuller longer. So what I personally like to do is try and break my calories for the day into five, sometimes six meals, depending upon um, how many hours I'm working. If I'm working from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., I need six meals that day. But if I'm working from 6 a.m. and I know I'm going to get home about 7 or 8, I'll probably only have five meals that day. Um, it just depends um, on what my day looks like and how busy I am. So for you, the easiest thing to do is look at the day ahead um, and look at when you get hungry and what time you have where you're sitting around doing nothing because those are the times that you're going to feel like you want to eat and that you have the, the biggest appetite. Then try and factor in your calories and factor in how many times you can therefore eat that day. So for you, you might be happy on three meals. I would always suggest people try and eat a minimum of four. Um, a minimum of four just gets you eating regularly and it really does prevent those binges. It prevents um, you getting home late at night and sitting down watching the telly and wanting to snack. You might have an extra meal left at that time. Um, so it can be really beneficial. Um, so yeah, once you've figured out how many meals in a day you're going to have, the next thing you want to think about is how you're going to make those meals as full as possible. So if it comes from the ground, try and eat it. It's the easiest way to say. Um, if you start buying processed meals or ready-made meals or um, ready-made potatoes and stuff like that, there's always um, extra calories basically put into those meals that you wouldn't get if you were just to buy potatoes and cook them yourself and mash them down or you know that kind of thing so always try and look at getting the most bang for your buck so if you had I don't know 2,000 calories in a day um, and you were splitting them into four or five hundred calorie meals I would look at bulking out those meals as much as possible with plenty of Veg. Um, if it's in the morning, you know, you're probably going to have some maybe fruit, yogurt, oats in there. That's fine. All those calories need to be counted for. So then I would definitely focus on getting lots of veg into my next three meals throughout the day. Um, especially green veg. There's such a low calorie rate on them themselves. Um, if you are struggling for carbohydrates you know you really do want to bulk out your meals with as much veg as possible um if you're on a higher fat diet i try and say to clients to look at even just using nuts and avocado rather than wasting their fats on oils i mean you do need to get fats in your body um in that respect and if you are on a higher fat intake it can be quite difficult because you feel like your meals are smaller due to the macronutrients um, and the calorie content and fats themselves but there are ways that you can manipulate your meals and still feel fuller for longer um, yeah bulking out your meals throughout the day so make sure you're bulking out your meals and make sure you are feeling full with those meals um, and if you're still hungry at the end of a meal always wait it takes I don't, it's something like eight minutes. I can't remember off the top of my head. It takes eight minutes for your food to hit your stomach. Um, some people it might even take longer. Some people it might be a bit quicker. Um, so finish your meal and wait. Wait until you get that full feeling, until you, you've given your food a chance to move down your body and let it digest um, or begin to digest. Um, if you immediately continue to eat, all of a sudden you get that really full tummy expanded feeling and that sometimes people start to feel tired, they feel sick, they've overate, 
um, and it's not a nice feeling to have um, and if, particularly if you're trying to be in a calorie deficit it's not a feeling you really want to get to because if you're getting to that point where you're so full of food chances are your body's not breaking it down it's not processing it um, and ultimately you're going to end up gaining weight if you're overeating so really be careful um, in that respect um, and give your food a chance to settle before you think I need to eat something else um, the last thing I want to tips and tricks for today is talking about fit and treats and now if you want a chocolate bar chances are that chocolate bar is going to be 250 to 300 calories that's almost a meal if you're having four or five hundred calorie meals in a day um, what I would suggest to do is to leave that chocolate bar for later at night have it um, later in the evening so that chances are you're going to go to bed after it or go to bed shortly after it you'll feel satisfied you'll feel happy um, but make sure when you're having that treat you've got no other treats around um, if you're living with someone try and get them to help you out on that I know how difficult it can be if you go into the biscuit tin and take one biscuit out of a pack of 12 and you know there's another 11 there that can be really challenging and that's when mindset and your wants to change really comes into play um, so yeah, I would suggest having treats later on in the evening or if you have a higher calorie day in the week, save the treats for that day. So if you have a day where you have 2,300 calories, well that's the perfect day to have that regular extra chocolate bar or whatever and then keep your four or 500 calorie meals consistent and the same throughout the day. Um, it's up to you how you want to approach it. But what I personally do is try and avoid eat treats even on cheat days. Um, for the most part, especially in the lead up to competitions. Um, it's just it's a much safer game to avoid them for a short period of time and then build them back in when you are confident and you know you have self constraint and you know you're in a good mindset to have a cheat and not go on a binge and not rebound. Um, we do need to factor in different things and we do need to have a good variety in our diet, but know your mindset, know your limitations and if you know having something is going to derail you for the next week, two weeks, three weeks, is it really worth it at that point in time? Wait until you're mentally stronger um, or you've even built your calories up and it's easier to fit in and you're not going to have that trigger of hunger or sugar. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Good luck, let me know how you get on and we'll catch up next week.